So as we've learned so far today, dynamic structures make some of the most unique structures in the world, and as such, they're presented with very unique engineering challenges. Well, I'm here with Emil Van Vuren. Emil, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Bro? Good. So Emil's one of the mechanical engineers here at Dynamic Structures, and I wanted to, uh, Emil to talk a little bit about some of the tools they use to solve those unique engineering challenges. And I see you've got Inventor fired up here and Dynamic Simulation. What, do you, what are you doing with Dynamic Simulation and Inventor? Well, Rob, one of the things that we found pretty early on when we started using Inventor Suite is just how useful Dynamic Simulation is even at the onset of a, of a concept design. So, uh, you know, early on in, in, in even conceptual design phase of your design, the geometry is really insignificant to the design challenge that you're trying to solve, right? And you use the tools inside of Inventor to do some of that. Definitely, yeah. We, okay, at this point, we don't really know what our space envelopes are gonna be or what, uh, we just have very general requirements that we have. So, you know, one of the things you guys do are things that have never been, you know, imagined, let alone manufactured or engineered. Right. So if you didn't have these types of tools, how long would that take you? Or, or would you even try some some projects if you didn't have these kind of tools? Well, like I said, what we would end up doing is it'll probably take a little bit longer uh, to get results, but the thing that we'd have to look at then is, is the reliability of that results and what the risk associated with that role, results are. So, so when you put <clears throat> all that information then into all the joints, you have all the forces, you have the basic geometry defined, and you hit simulate, you're getting a more accurate picture than uh, in a shorter amount of time than you would have been able to do if you'd done hand calculations? Exactly. And the, the addition to that, I can visually see what the thing's doing. If I were to do hand calculations, you'd have to spend just as much time as you did doing the calculations to go through and check and make sure that everything makes sense and that, that it is actually doing. What, is, <clears throat> what does this tell you then as a mechanical engineer? This, I mean, this is... Um, you know, as a, as, a, as a visual person, you know, I can see forces, I can see forces distributed throughout a part in a, in a finite element analysis. Right. But this output grapher here tells you something completely different, right? Yeah, exactly. What, what it tells me, well, I'll first go in and see, well, is it actually moving the way I want it to or did I have any weird constraints throughout? So it's very quick to, again, just based on the visual as well, but with the graph, you, with the empirical data, you can make sure that what you are actually simulating is what you expect it to simulate. So I, I think it's great to be able to, to early on in design uh, concept phase, basically be able to lay out things and figure out what type of actuators you need and, and all those. What happens once you're past that concept phase and you're actually beginning to design uh, the, the unique components of, uh, of your structures? Can you use those same techniques to help inform the design? Yeah, definitely. What we've got uh, um, when we start flushing out the details of of our frames or a structure that's going to be tying all these things together, um, the analysis doesn't stop there. We've all along refined our motion pass. We know what the actuators are capable of now, but what we can do then is once, as we start developing more detailed designs of the brackets, we can bring those into the model hmm. that we've been working with all along, um, rerun the analysis, and then we can take that the load data and the force data from the analysis and directly put that into a, an FEA, quickly run that f through an analysis and basically we can do it all along the design phase because we can iterate very quickly and the analysis that we do with that can sort of guide us in the, in the right direction. So um, another thing that, uh, that I wanted to talk to you about is uh, I've seen some of the amazing animations that you guys do and you don't necessarily use Inventor to do that, do you? No. I think you're using 3ds Max, right? That's right. Yeah. What we uh, what we have found is with you can do some of the of the animations within um, Inventor, but uh, typically when we get further along in the design phase, we'll get data brought in from our customers mm -hmm. to do more specific visualizations. You guys are using uh, topographical information that you know that you receive from Civil 3D. You know, clearly using Inventor, design some of your 3D models, using 3ds Max, you're using Navisworks, you're using almost the whole whole gamut uh, of products, and 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 so you don't just use one of them. It sounds to me like you use the right tool for the right job to get the right result. Exactly. We, we can't afford to, to not have those tools available and to to you suffer through working with the wrong tool. We, we need to be able to do things quickly here because we are relatively lean 
and our, uh, our project cycles are so quick. We, we really need the right tool for the right specific job. So you've heard about our, our, our new product design suite, right? I did, yes. So there you're going to have access to you know, Sketchbook, Inventor, Showcase, Max, um, all within you know, a, a single deployment basically it's going to install all those on your machines and, and dedicated license to, to all those applications. Wow. And, and so you feel that's going to be a benefit to you? Oh, that'll be fantastic, especially um, for the, the earlier stage of, of our projects and concept development and things like that, getting a more organic tools like Sketchbook and, um, and those tools will be invaluable. Yep, yep, and, and Alias, being able to, to work with those, uh, that, that surface information. I've long you're talking wanted about. to play with Alias, so <laughs> I'll be looking at that one for sure. Awesome. Hey, man, thanks so much for your time. Thank I really you. appreciate it. You guys do fantastic work, and I really appreciate your Excellent. time. Finally, we hop over to Tom McLaren to see what makes working at Dynamic Structure such an interesting place to work. Plus, he has a sweet accent, so you don't want to miss this one.